I, I, I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason What is the crack, lads? Welcome back The man is back, lads He's back from travelling around the world, right? He was shooting a few movies there over in Indonesia Doing a press, tur- a press He's like the rock going around the place We are back with the podcast We have kind of We have a couple of new graphics as well, Wes We are officially now rebranded Ooh. as the eFootball Universe uh, oh, podcast because boy, step away for six weeks yeah man there's big executive de- executive <laughs> decisions made by one person are never a good idea but um um, welcome back man from the other side of the world and we'll get into your adventure maybe towards the end of the podcast and kind of introduce a couple of uh people that didn't know you were in bali doing the event uh to what you did you know what you learned yeah, from yeah. it you know the the good the bad maybe a couple of ugly stories maybe a couple <laughs> of bit of gossip no any messing maybe. um but yeah, it's good to have you back, man. It's been a while, and I think, obviously, Cara did all the graphics for us coming back with the podcast. It's going to be something that we look at going forward, is that, like, I think as we go into 2023, man, I mean, Pez, Pez is dead, really, isn't it? Like, officially, it is dead. It's not coming back. We've no news on Master League. We've no news on Become a Legend. We've no news on Edit Mode. Um, so, I mean, you know, comparing Pez to what we have now at the moment is just, it's like a completely different franchise, and we're going to get into that uh, but yeah, welcome back, Wes. It's been it's been a while, man, and we've missed you. We missed you. It's, it has been a while. It has been a while, and and uh, you know, stories of my demise have been greatly exaggerated uh, <laughs> in terms of my absences that you've seen. But yeah, it's great to be back. It's great to be talking about e football. Um, uh, my my uh, kind of escapade to Bali, as it were. Yeah, man. It, it kind of it kind of when you are in that environment with people who are passionate about the game. When you were in that environment where it's esports, where you have people, you know, exactly my role, which was, you know, shoutcasting for the first time, which was, again, a world away from just being an analyst. It was being kind of the main guy. It's like going from being Michael Cole to being Jim Ross. It's, like <laughs> it, it's a completely different role and skill set. Um, but the enthusiasm is infectious. That that That's what I kind of took away from Bali. It was like my first thought going me home was, God damn, I'm going to be able to do content or I'm about to go and start streaming eFootball again. I did that yesterday. I did a couple of Yeah, man, I've seen you stream actually the yesterday. Only, the only reason I stopped was because my controller ran out of juice because I've just not <laughs> been on charge for, for a, you know, a couple of weeks. Um, but it, it's that enthusiasm. It kind of just draws you back in. And and obviously, you know, being around people who are, like I said, are passionate about it uh, and also kind of reaffirming my own kind of place within the kind of the ecosystem within the mm. football community yeah you know talking to people who had known me since i was a competitor some people know me just as a commentator some people who i'd never met before within bali it kind of almost mentally reset me a little bit so i'm very happy to be back on the pod obviously i love speaking to you at length about all good things e-football all good bad things or should i say yeah e-football man because there is a couple of we need to discuss yeah, a couple of bad things man there's, but... a, there's a couple of humdingers and <sighs> you know if i've yeah, I'll see whether I've got the torch. You know, the I can light the torch paper and uh, and see if I've got any uh, pipe bombs hanging around. Yeah, man. No, because a lot has changed. But I think I think that's a good point to kick off the podcast. Is like. I, I I have always said this, you know, to you, and I've said it to other people. Is that like. I see if you are a fan of Pez or you're a fan of a franchise for years, it's 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 kind of. It's it's like a circle, man. You always you always come back around to you know different sections of that circle it's that whether you've you know left for six months and then you come back streaming or you you know dip your toe back in it i've seen a couple of guys return and you know um kind of stream again or maybe you know be be kind of doing content again um and i think that's what people don't really get in my opinion with the Ooh, am i gone can you still hear me no i can still hear you yeah oh yeah the thing isn't isn't moving these are the this live, is text. These are the live, uh, the live functions that you get. With yeah, my my uh, my circle started stop <laughs> moving there. We are we are having a couple of audio issues, so if I hope this is okay. But anyway, but yeah, I do think that there is like a different journey everyone takes, and that's why it's so hard for people to just like completely walk away from Pez. Yeah. Even though it's not Pez anymore, you know, people are still putting up tweets saying, you know, this is what we're missing, and it's like. It is very hard. So I think you're a good kind of example, not using you as a as a proxy to, to make my point, but you are a good example because I know you've struggled with the direction yeah, maybe a bit more than me. I've kind of I've kind of fallen back in love with creating content because yeah. I have I have been forced to not forced to play the game, but I've nothing else to do. I can't edit. Like there's no yeah, option you, for you it. Literally, you literally have Dream Team 
and the authentic mode. And yeah. That is all you've got. Like, and that's so it. For, for you for you as a content creator, it is it's dream team or bust yeah. at this point in time. There isn't a oh well I can go and create a, a Master League series or I can go and create a Pokemon a Legend series or you know, you you know, you, you can't there's not much more you can drain out of the game than what yeah. you have. I mean, granted, I love watching player reviews. I love watching tactical reviews. I love watching stuff where it's like we go through the the, the Dream Team Chronicles, that type of thing. Mm. It's awesome to watch, even as an, you know, even as a, a slightly biased viewer because of the <laughs> Edge Universe. But it, you you have a you have found corners of the game that you are able to create content for. Mm. So for you to get the enjoyment out of it is great for players who are getting enjoyment out of the game. That's great. But also, we have to think on the, the flip side of it. And I saw uh, I saw one of the tweets, I think it was some Pez rumors, I think it was. Talking yeah, about yeah. Online and offline. And, and that's absolutely, you know, for online players, for solely players who are just looking there for feature players of the week, for uh, nominating contracts, for match pass, all these things, it's wonderful for them in that sense. And they're like, yeah, yeah, give us more of that. But for the offline player, it absolutely sucks. Yeah. It, 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 because... So it's not and there, man, realistically. It's not there watched, for offline. Yeah. yeah, and I watched the video where you were talking about the roadmap just before we came live, mm. um, where you were talking about, like, oh, well, this is where we were meant to be and this is where things are. But you're quite right. There isn't a there isn't a coherent map. No. Not anymore. It, you have that still image, and that's about your lot. I mean, I saw the thing where it was, whilst I was away, where it was like, oh, we're going to do eFootball radio. And I'm like... Okay, first off, I appreciate the ability or the idea to try and communicate with your audience, but please don't try and shut the audience down when mm. they are literally at the, their wits' end with the fact that you haven't told them when Master League's coming, you haven't told them when every mode's coming, you haven't told them pricing, you haven't told them any of this stuff. You've been mm-hmm. incredibly, incredibly vague mm-hmm. to the point where you're just going, here's a season it's going to be out in. Yeah. Oh, winter Winter could literally <laughs> be March, right? And it could going, be, man, yeah. Bit, but it's going to be out in winter 2022. So, okay, so if it's going to be out in winter 2022, yeah. that means it comes out before the end of the year, Yeah. right? Then then the, the end of the year will pass, and then it will just keep going. Yeah. The, the, the bit that still surprises me from the people within, or the people at Konami, or at least the people who are in charge of the Twitter games, is that they are still surprised that people are still angry that they still don't have Master League. Mm. It's almost like they are surprised and they feel as though that they are absolved of all guilt yeah. because of what because of what's been delivered so far. That that should have bought them enough time. And it, it, it hasn't because actually, if you had offline game modes from the get-go and then you had your online modes waiting, you know, if you, if the if the if the roles had been reversed, they'd be getting such an easier time on Twitter. Mm. Because because yeah. the offline because the offline player base on, on Twitter are more vocal than the online player base that's playing it currently. Because mm. every time that I see play eFootball put out a tweet or somebody's interacting with it, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, We don't care about this, where's Master League? We don't yeah. care about this, where's edit mode? We don't mm. care about any of this, what are you doing with your game? And the the issue for me falls down into one critical part, and again it goes back to communication. They started great. They started great where it's like, yeah, we're going to talk about patch notes. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. And it's just slowly skidded back into yeah. almost playbook Konami of we're not going to tell you anything and you're just going to have to try and figure it out for yourself. And that mm. isn't fair on the community. It's not fair on the players. It's not fair on the people who are creating content either. Yeah. No, there's a lot Like, there's a lot to unpack with it. And I think the biggest thing is that like you made a good point there of the community like and it's actual how they're how they're like taking the news and stuff and the lack of news and i think the biggest issue that's currently facing the community and it's not really a konami issue because as far as they're concerned they built e-football like some people still believe that they like that konami were developing a fully fledged next gen unreal engine like fully featured game right and that covid well, hit well, and then they decided right we can only yeah. launch dream team but like yeah. in actuality their whole business plan was to release, like they said. I don't know. Did you listen to the eFootball radio? Because I know you were in in uh, Bali. Time but difference was wild. Yeah, so but I they said actually. it. They said it basically. They've said it. If people want to actually like receive what they're saying, you know what I mean. Instead of wanting to hear what they want to hear, like they have said that they made the decision to get eFootball into as many people's hands as possible. Um, 
to have no like you know entry requirements into it is that like if you couldn't play on a PS5 you could play on your mobile if you couldn't play on your mobile you could play on your PC or that, that's a, do you know that's what I'm saying valid, that's, yeah. a, that's, a valid, that's a valid argument right up until you go back and look at the pre the pre promo mm. speeches and descriptions of how the game was going to be they yeah. promised this almost legendary experience that was like it was going to be something that they'd never seen before I think the old adage which they used was like we're even surprised as to how good it is and then this is what they've delivered so yeah. then you look at it and go well if you're if you're literally surprised at just how good this is and it's exceeded your own expectations and this is what you have in front of you I'm sorry your expectations do not match the community's ones, especially when you're putting out the teaser trailers that came out before. Yeah. And I'll constantly reference it because, and I know you have as well on the, uh, you know, going forward as well. I will constantly reference it because, again, can I only set the tone for the expectation? Oh, yeah, definitely. Community? Definitely, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't the community that came out and was like, this is going to be a brand new next-gen experience. <laughs> it was, it was... Konami setting this out by going, here's the teaser trailer, here's, here's Messi stepping out and, and yeah. looking absolutely fucking amazing in, excuse my language, but looking amazing in front of in front of the, the, the Unreal Engine. They were the ones that set the expectation, nobody else. So when they're coming at people and they're saying, oh, well, you know, we, we don't want the community to, or we don't want the communication channels to be broken down because we've tried so hard to start being open with people. Mm. Communication is a two-way street. Yeah. You deliver a message to me, and then I deliver one to you. If you're, if I want to send a message to you, and then you send one back, that'd be akin to me sending you a message and you saying, "Actually, I didn't agree with that message. I'm not going to talk to you." <laughs> right? Yeah. You cannot, you cannot have it both ways. You can't have an open and honest dialogue and then not be happy with the open and honest dialogue that's coming back about you. Yeah. But the problem is, man, as as I like as my as my point is, and I've kind of tried to put this across in all my videos. The problem is, and I've spoken about this with you before, like and from everything I've been told and from everything that I'm privy to, right? There's yeah. some things, obviously, as part of a community, like we can't discuss. And it's not for like being a yes man or it's not for being, yeah, you know, yeah, kissing no, arse no, or absolutely. anything like that. It's absolutely. just, you know, you have to keep c contacts open and you have to network within a community if you are part of a community. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, but, uh, I, I think the biggest problem is that the, the model that they have is working for them like massively so you're going back to konami you're going back to the guys that are making the decisions right and it's not the yeah, guys yeah. you're interacting with on twitter it's not the guys that yeah, you might absolutely. know on a first name basis like our people see on twitter or instagram yeah. or whatever right you're going back to the guys and you're saying you know people are upset yeah but our profits are up you know yeah, yeah, tenfold no, think, you know what i mean yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's that's a conundrum then that the, the community has to face with because the people that are not happy with the game that want master league that want edit mode and all that are being outnumbered by you know, like a hundred to one by people yeah. that are happy to buy five versions of Neymar. So yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. that's and the. That, but that's it. but that's the whole that's the whole way that that Konami have ha, have their model. If you if you present them with quantifiable data, yeah, that, or if they have quantifiable data, where they like you said, if 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 the if the message is going back, community's not happy with this community. I'm not happy with that community's not happy with the other, and then they just go, yeah, there's our balance sheet. Exactly. That's it. That's, it. That's, That's what it boils down so, to that so, people don't so, understand. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and to kind of go on that then, so then if, if you are looking to try and create a, a kind of a discernible change or at least to make an impact, yeah, one person not buying coins isn't going to affect it. No. One person not buying packs isn't going to affect it because as you quite rightly said, there'll be a hundred other people outside the door that'll be going, do you know what, actually, I want to buy every single uh, feature player pack. I want to buy every single thing. But then they'll also be, they'll, they will also be one of the major ones that will sit on Twitter and go, this game's not good enough. And it's like, but also you're, you're giving the message to people indirectly that the game is fine because you're, yeah. you're investing in the content that they want. All but that's just the way gaming like, has yeah. gone though man like yeah, that's course, like yes. that's that's the thing is that like we are kind of dinosaurs with the yeah. product that we expect now from a game that it's if the thing is in terms of because people like to say oh well you know eFootball's dying or eFootball's dead and, or, or you know it's not very good but again they are i think people are necessarily thinking about that from a from a fan point of view yeah, from a Pez from point a, of view, from, man, that's what it is. And from and from a yeah. Pez point of view, whereas whereas actually, when you look at it in terms of how much money it is generating for Konami, it's a financial success, but it's not a critical one. Like it's no. not like a, it's not like a you know the the big websites, the IGNs of this world are not going out and turning around and going eFootball's better than FIFA. Yeah, it's not it's not happening because the, yeah. because fundamentally the game the game is is nowhere close. You know you are mm. you know even to some people this is still a, it's still 
it's still a demo to them because yeah. they haven't got Master League and they haven't got any mode. Yeah. Well, it's a demo. It's a demo of 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 a PES game that was never that's never going to release. Like, you know what I mean? There's people yeah. waiting there for. There's we, people waiting there, and look, I would not be surprised if eFootball 2024 or eFootball 2025, if they had the modes ready, was ever released as a fully fledged title with all your modes, and then you have like the Warzone model, as Pez Rumor said on Twitter. We covered it before, where yeah, they yeah. should have kept Pez as a Pez product and moved into the free to play model with eFootball, and then you yeah, have your offline yeah. mode and you have your online mode. But then, yeah. obviously, there's stuff to figure out, like which engine you use, and Warzone has that exact same then, problem as well. Then, at the but, moment. Then it's, but then it's also the logistics of it is that you're not gonna you're not gonna create two separate games that you have to do two separate patches for no. every single year, and no. you're gonna have to split your resources. No. But then that, but again, that also falls down to how the company do their thing and about how company how the company put their resources together. That's that's the that's the root of it. It's yeah. it's almost as though it is archaic in terms of the way that they are functioning because yeah. you know as we've just seen the, the news on the like i got told oh an update's coming on december 15th and then literally <laughs> i went live yesterday and somebody was like oh yeah can i have already delayed it and I'm yeah like, it's delayed go go, go figure go mm. figure they announced something on a, on a on a complete date and then they delay it. like if anything as a company, and I know that I sound like a massive nerd with my day job with this. <laughs> as a company, if you turn around to somebody and say, that is a release date that we are going to, this is where all the pre-testing happens, this is where all of the, the user acceptance tests, all of that stuff, and we're testing it to make sure everything works perfectly, you stick to that date. So yeah. clearly, there are people within that, that operation, or whatever, whoever it is that's, that's meant to be doing all of these things, quality assurance, all of this stuff, and they go, oh, it's unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's, but there's that no delay will probably be a short delay. You know, they'll want to get it out before Christmas. That would be my guess. I'd say it'll be delayed by a week or so, and of then course, it'll but, just be but, onto the next big season update, which will be, yeah. you know, like eFootball 2023 20, or 20, well, 24. eventually 24. But I'm saying there'll be another season to pass yet, like season three. And I think that will be when, you know, eFootball is, is 3.0, like version 3.0. And then yeah. we're going to maybe get another couple of versions before we get uh, like, eFootball we, 24. And, we, and I think there's been a little bit of almost revisionist history as well, because I, I was looking at some of the comments from the from the, the, the roadmap. And this is not a shot at anybody, by the way, because we did actually say way back when that this was going to be the type of thing that happened, was that people are now going, well, actually, if you look at it where it first started come out in 0 0.9 to where it is now, we're happy to wait some more, right? Yeah. If you remember, like, if you're talking about PES 2021, which feels like an age ago now, that game was there so that they made sure that this thing was ready to go because they said we want to provide you with the best the best possible yeah. experience from the get go over and all of this stuff, and it never happened. But mm. now it's now a case where the people are saying, well, given where 0 0.9 was, we're happy to wait for 2.3, or we're happy to wait another bit longer. And I'm not, and and to me, I look at it and go, well. I'm still looking at those things that happened before, and you just go, "Well, yeah. where, where's the where's the disconnect?" And it's like, where where do you where do you match up the expectation of you <laughs> sitting there and saying, "I'm happy to wait for this thing," when actually it should have been delivered ages ago. Yeah, it should have been. I know, I know, and I totally understand that there are people who are sitting down and enjoying this. I obviously have recaught the bug of playing e football. Don't go wrong, <laughs> but I still see the frustrations of the other side of things where people yeah. sit there and go, "It should have been there in 2022. Why did it not launch in the state that it should have been?" Yeah, and, and and you know, it's it's hard to avoid. But this goes back to my point about the communication side of things: is that Konami can't ask for honest and open feedback if they're not willing to take it. Yeah, if you can't take people being angry with the fact that you haven't delivered what you said you were going to. Don't ask. Don't ask the question. If you yeah. Don't like the question. If you don't like the answer, don't ask the question. Yeah. That, that's the way I look at it. You know. Yeah. There's because a difference between if if Konami ask like I've seen people on Twitter, and in fairness, look, I I kind of agree with you. We will we will touch on the gameplay like yeah. in a in a few minutes, right? Because that's that's a big turn on my side at the moment because I've had a kind of a different journey than than a lot of people that have been creating content or streaming with like eFootball because I've really enjoyed Dream Team. Like I've actually enjoyed yeah. it way more than I ever enjoyed my club, obviously apart from co-op. But I do appreciate that they are trying to push it out a bit and have the eFootball radio, have the spaces, have the streams. I just feel like the the problem is, right, is that it's you can split it into both ways. Is that if if 
if Konami put out a, a survey, right, and they're asking about just gameplay stuff, and you have the first 20 comments, where's Master League? Oh, you know, this is game is dead, blah, 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 right? That is that is a community issue because the community are wanting to, like, you know, they're trying to focus on something that isn't, isn't being asked or stuff like that. But the problem because is, like, is that there's no information coming out instead of saying, look, Master League is going to be out September 2023, new season, we're going to launch in, this is the roadmap. We'll have a reveal at at, at uh, E three. Then those questions stop because the answer yeah. that I can give on if I'm doing a stream or you're doing a stream is like, oh, where's so, Master League? Well, look, we're getting information well, on June. You know that kind yeah, of way. Instead of like, yeah, yeah. we don't know. So yeah, because the, because the vibe because the vibe from the the vocal the vocalness within Twitter and probably Facebook and Reddit and wherever yeah. this this podcast will probably find to in the corners of the internet is that the people who are listening to this and the people who are playing the game out of almost spite at this point feel that konami don't care that's that's the critical point yeah if they came out in the morning and went look we have seen all of these comments we're going to let you know that as you said if like if they're like, do you know what actually we're going to have an update for you on uh, in june not yeah. necessarily oh we're going to wait until fall of 2024 yeah whatever the stupid thing the windows <laughs> yeah the stupid windows just come out and go yeah we're going to have something around around this time let us, you know, let us, let us just put it all together, and we'll have something for you where we'll have a presentation, or we'll, you know, we'll have a spaces. Again, for example, the, if the spaces is yes is a good idea. Yeah. But Konami were dictating the comment. They were dictating what they wanted to talk about because the first episode was about the Copper Italia. Now you can argue many different things about many different things <clears> within <throat> it, within eFootball. I would argue and say that the majority of the the community at whole. Yeah, would much rather care less about esports when Master League and Edit Mode haven't been on the table. Yeah, if they, if, if you'd have gone first episode is going to be talking about Master League, about our plans to do Master League, and about our plans to do this, that, and the other. Like you said, it stops all the comments then because then yeah. then you can branch on to you know episode three and episode four. We talk about uh, e football championship pro, or we talk about um, the Bruno Cup, or, or whatever it is you want to talk about. Yeah. Get your bread and butter sorted first before you start going down the lines of, you know, oh, we'll start talking about the esports. Because again, <clears throat> the comments are not going to stop until you make you make that choice and you make that statement to say, yeah, yeah this is what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Because until you do, you're just going to keep getting the same responses that nobody cares. Yeah, but I do That's think it. as well, man, like that. There's a lot of people, and I see I see it as well. That like I see it firsthand when I do a video, right? If I do a video. And I do when I put it up on YouTube, right? Like, I think people have it in their head that there's there's two types of fans, right? There's either one that are either just, you know, happy to accept anything that we're, get, we're getting and yeah. Dream Team is crap, but we're still playing it because we're fanboys or there's nothing better to play. And then there's others that are just literally hating the game, playing it through spite and waiting for Master League. But what people are actually forgetting about as well is that the majority of the consumers... Uh, don't use social media the yeah, way absolutely. do you know yeah. what I mean and that's where the people like as I've said to you before I know firsthand four or five of my friends like in real life that have never played like an e-football or PES game before like they might have dabbled in it if I was at their house or they'd have a few tournaments or whatever with it locally yeah, yeah. if I was doing one but like they're actually playing the game and they'd buy Neymar or Messi legend pack because it's attractive to them to go in buy a team of 11 players yeah, that you yeah, don't yeah. need any investment of time apart from a bit of money like it's 15 20 quid right which is a lot of people for some in these times i get that but yeah, it's yeah. a free game that they're getting practically for 20 quid they can train up neymar to be like 97 98 overall and they yeah. can go on and they can you know they can smash people they can score nice goals there's no investment in it and if they don't play it for three months yeah they don't really care because it's not like a yeah, 70 yeah. euro game yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think that's where the big the big disconnect is coming is that like you have the legacy Pez fans and I would include myself in that even though I'm enjoying Dream Team in a new direction um, like I do think that the, those Pez legacy fans should be respected should be like brought along yeah, should be given yeah, the information absolutely. but absolutely. the new the new wave of fans then as well like does it make them less of a fan because they've never played no, Master I, League and I, they don't I, know I, what yeah. Master League is it's, yeah. they're enjoying Dream Team they're supporting the game and you can frown upon it. You can look down upon it and say, I mean, this guy's obviously spent 500 quid on his team. I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, 
that's everyone's choice to do. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, and, and listen, and that, but and it's a difficult. It is a difficult one, man. It yeah. is a difficult one. Like it's very hard it, it, because depending on what it, side of the argument you're on, like you know, you could say that. Like you could put any narrative you want for anyone that plays e football. You could call me, as I said, you could call me a kiss arse. You could say like, "Oh, you should be making videos every week talking about mass yeah. demanding information." And it's like, but I'm enjoying Dream Team. I'm enjoying yeah, going yeah. on and playing yeah. the game. So yeah. what am I yeah. meant to do? Like you know, it's yeah. tough. You can you can you can enjoy playing e football, but you can also still understand and want information on on offline like the two are not mutually exclusive exactly man that's it they're they're never they're never mutually exclusive like i've said before on this podcast i am i i haven't played master league since i had a playstation one or a playstation two and it was like a multi-tap where i played like (laughs) like locally right but that doesn't mean that i don't understand the importance of it or the relevance to it of course in terms of where we are so it's like you know I look at it and just say, yeah, actually, do you know what? They absolutely deserve, or, or uh, you know, legacy fans or players of offline, they deserve that information just as much as the online players do with, oh, well, what lenses are coming out? Yeah, exactly, man. That's doing? exactly what, it. What are we doing with this? It should be a case of whenever they do the whole, like, oh, we've got a trailer to show you about Maradona and Batistuta and whoever else. <laughs> yeah. It should be, oh, and by the way, here's a small update regardless of whether it's big or small here's an update on where we are with master league that's that's realistically where we should be at yeah it should be a case of we're 40 percent down the track here's what we've already looked at here's some of the teaser features that we're looking at implementing i mean hell i mean if you want to talk about communication ufl are doing a better job with with showing the development cycle of their game rather than what we've got in front of us which is just here's an update go fend for yourself and you'll see yeah. it's different yeah like no, you're right. You are right. You know, because and, the gameplay changes every week. Like the gameplay, yeah. depending on the servers, depending on the load of the servers, like the gameplay has gone from like last two weeks, I was probably enjoying the game more than I ever had since V1.0 compared to this week. It's practically unplayable yeah. for me. Like I can't, yeah, like yeah. I literally just can't understand why certain things are happening. Like I'm scoring own goals that I haven't scored in a hundred plus games and I'm not talking about the game screwing you. I'm not talking about certain, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like animations locking or like responsiveness or anything like that. It's just, I do think there is a bigger conversation to be had about, I don't even know what the conversation needs to be about now, because as you said, right? Like for me, I think there's like, the communication needs to be like way more respected. I think going forward, because it's so easy now to judge a game before it's even out and just like trial it on word of mouth. Like you saw yeah. how memed uh, the beta was when it first launched. Like yeah, it was just absolutely, absolutely dead on arrival. No, I, mean, um, I mean, I mean, what got memed was when they turned around and they were like performance beta test. And it yeah. looked like, it looked like somebody had put an indie game out there. Yeah. Like it genuinely, like you had to go searching for an online performance test and it looked absolutely awful. But that, yeah. that, that, that just showed you what what the communication side of things was was that you had to go looking for it if if i were if i were them i would literally just try and just do it hey actually we we're gonna need to have a chat about this because they're they're expecting respect from the community yeah for for what has already been put out there the community expect respect from konami because if they don't play their game i mean this is like everybody then they don't have an income with it. That's yeah. as simple as it is. If every, if literally every single user in the morning down tools didn't play their game, they wouldn't have any revenue coming in. Yeah. So, but that will never happen. Revenue. You see, that's the no, thing. No, no, no. I know, I know it would never happen. But my point stands is, is that the respect goes both ways. If they yeah. want us, if they want player bases to be respected, or if they want respect from the player base, they need to respect the player base. That's yeah. What, that's it. Works both ways. They cannot be. Oh, we're moaning about uh, we're moaning about the way that people communicate with us because it never you know it doesn't go anywhere. It's like well, it doesn't go anywhere because you've already you've already shut down lines of communication because nobody talks to anybody about anything. Yeah, but that's that's the reality mean. of it. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna pull down the shutters and not talk to anybody, then what are you gonna expect every time you put out a tweet about oh well, here's here's our here's our team? I mean, God bless them, the, the broadcast team for the Bruno Cup. Oh, here's all the here's all the casters. And then everybody just in the comments go, yeah, don't care. Where's Master League? Don't care. Yeah. Where's Master League? Yeah, don't but see, I think, I think that's, I think that's like, like the Bruno Cup is something that people, like people were asking me about the Bruno Cup and I saw, I know Ricky did a video where he was talking about it and he was just trying to say like that, 
you know, it's a free to play game. They obviously want to like have guys that might not be eFootball guys or Pez guys. But like, you know, obviously in the case of Manny, obviously Manny has played it from the UK and stuff. But yeah. there was some guys from Spain and France that have never played the game before. And they're literally influencers that their job is to put it as wide as possible. I don't have an issue with that because I do think that that's the, the that's the audience they're going for now. It's not they're not trying to get somebody that played Pez Five back in the day to come into their ecosystem. They're trying to get guys that are downloading Fortnite, Rocket League, Warzone, pumping money in for cosmetic yeah. items. They're trying to get that audience in. Yeah, and that's I what I that. think. There's the disconnect. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not it's not good enough. Like as a legacy fan, it's not good enough. But what, what like, should what should realistically happen with those types of events? It should be very very simple. It should be very very simple in those types of events. And let's just let's just say let's just say co-op gets on the table, right? Yeah. Let's just let's just say co-op gets on the table. So you take your let's use it mainstream influencer. Yeah. You take Manny, you stick him with Sep, right? Yeah. You yeah, no, German, I agree. I agree. You, you take you take your German influencer, you stick him with Med. Or well, Mednasa for those who are yeah. familiar. You take those influencers and you marry them up with the ones in the community. Because yeah. the community then go, Jesus, oh actually Sip gets to play with Manny and it's on like a Konami vlog. Oh, this is sick. Or, yeah. oh, Midnasa finally gets his due because he's basically become like the biggest streamer in Germany of eFootball. Oh, tip hat to him. Brilliant. Because then that not only does that then ingratiate yourself with the community going, yeah, actually, guys, we understand that there's people who need a bit of a, a bit of a head, you know, a bit of a tip than that hat to Yeah. Him. But then you also, you cover the Konami box where they go, oh, actually, we've got a whole bunch of people who, like, we want to get messages out to, because then it expands the audience and it makes your, it makes your people within football bigger because they get an audience of somebody different. Yeah. And then it makes it everybody grow. Everything. So that actually in the future, you wouldn't need to go and branch out to people within yeah. mainstream because the, because the people who are within eFootball's ecosphere are mainstream. It's not yeah. rocket science to to do PR, it's not rocket science. If, if a fat guy from Birmingham can sit here and tell you how you need to do things, and he's got no idea about PR in the instance, then there's something wrong. There is something wrong there, you know? Yeah. No, you're right, man. You can marry the both. Like, you can marry the two to get everyone happy, and nobody yeah. can complain and say, like, oh, you know, why wasn't not Sepp ex- invited? Yeah. Why wasn't, you know, whoever invited? Like, it is, it is, as I said, it is, it is a very difficult one to like address because you could talk about it and five different people could have if five you know different how to manage it you can make stuff go a little bit further like yeah if you're playing the events and playing everything yeah from that standpoint yeah i tip my hat to them and and yeah if, if it's a case of if it's a case of that that you know to give people their flowers yes they have included stuff that they they should have like yeah there's things there that yes they 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 finally got there you know it may have been behind schedule it may not it may not have been in the time frames that everybody else expected it by but there is finally a match pass. There is yeah. objectives. There are these things. Granted, to my to my chagrin, they're behind coin only stuff. But it's it's what you expect from 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 nowadays because yeah. that's that's all it, it'll ever be. But I made I made the point, and we did. I actually we did record a vi- uh, podcast with Spoonie, but there was a couple of tech issues and audio issues, so we will be redoing that podcast. Whereas you were on you were on your uh, your Bali trip, but I made <laughs> a point. I made a point to Spoonie. That I'm going to repeat here. That I reckon, right? You mentioned UFL earlier, right? I reckon if UFL or goals came out with what we currently have as a package in eFootball now, there would be no where's Master League, where's Edit Mode, where's Anti, because it's a brand new developer. I think be- yeah. I think Konami's biggest challenge is getting away from that Pez tag because people are still judging it as the developers of Pez. Oh man, we had it so good when yeah. we had Pez. Now we are eFootball. football. It's a shadow of its former self. Yeah, but Do you know, whereas if UFL came point. out with this, that you had these, you had yeah. this free-to-play game that you could buy players, but you could grind the players. Um, like, that's no, just get, my opinion it. on it. Yeah, 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 I get I get it. The, the, only, the only issue, or the only thing I, I would then raise on that <coughs> is if that's the case and they want to get away from, from Pez and they want to get yeah. rid of it, they need to rename their game modes. They need to get away yeah. from it. No, well, they, they, but I think they will. I don't think they'll bring out no, Master League. No, It'll be called but, but don't, something else, but you know. Don't, but don't, but don't reference it when they're saying, "Oh, it's going to be coming in." Blah blah. blah you know, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, but that like, could just be a breakdown in translation and yeah, communication, you know. But, yeah, but it, but again, that but again, that that's that communication side of things. Is yeah, that, you know, I've used the phrase before. Konami are going to do what Konami want to do. Like, yeah. we can shout for the heavens. I, I can put 
presentations together like I tried to do to, to kind of have a have a chat around their their esports structures. Yeah. Uh, and you can you can say what you want, but ultimately it's their game, it's their puppy, it's their baby. They're going to do whatever they want to do. And and again, if you if you choose to get on board with it, great. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, because that's ju- that's just the way life is in general as well, man. Like it's that yeah. if something isn't for you, you don't need to stay consuming it. Like you know, like yeah, I, I, mean, I always make with, that point. With, and it's the same with Twitch and you with YouTube. Like yeah. we have people who are, you know, we have people who invest their time in coming to watch creators. You have people investing their time coming to be moderators in chats and stuff. Like it's all it's all part, but well, it's all part of the kind of the, the ecosystem that people yeah. don't really see. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's like the thing. I the thing that sums it up for me is that like they are. I think they are hitting a lot of what they want to hit. It's just that the most vocal people on Twitter and that have been part of the community for a long time are still attaching it to the Pez brand, and yeah. they're not wrong to be doing that because Konami have kind of they obviously don't want to just put a, a you know a wall up in front of those people they want to leave a door there the door might be locked at the moment but once master league comes yeah. out that door can easily be unlocked instead of it just being a wall that needs to be broken down so they are yeah. trying to kind of keep the legacy fan in, in you know included by saying yeah we're working on an offline mode it's going to be this it's going to be that um but like on the other on the flip side of it then is that like i do think that dream team even as we've spoken about like the match pass being able to buy players for GP, like that's huge for somebody that is not, has no attachment to previous PES games. Do you know that kind yeah, of way? Yeah. Like that yeah, you could yeah. go in and... If you, if you had a completely fresh look at it, 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 obviously some of these things would be like, oh, okay, this this looks really good. So yeah. People, like you said, to the people who've been playing PES and to the people who have previously played PES, you're in that realm of going... Ah, this isn't what it used to be, and ah, yeah. this isn't what it could. and and that's and that seeps in like it does. It, it really does. It's like the KFC chips, man. Remember when they, they changed the uh, no, chips man, to KFC? Don't, don't. I'm still scarred about that. Yeah, I'm see, that's what I'm talking about, man. You know, you wouldn't go <laughs> to KFC and issue. demand demand off the person working behind the bar to bring you out the old chips. You know, <laughs> it's just that when it is Pez, I think passion passion is very like there is a serious passionate community there for Pez. Yeah. Like it's a it's it's a labor of love, especially editing and. You know, even doing videos, like, you know, you're doing videos there. The fan base is, like, so small compared to FIFA or compared to NBA that, like, you are kind of talking to the same fans the whole time. Like, so, unless they can attract new people. But, yeah, man, it's it's a tough one. I think, I think until V2.3, I think the delay of that, I think, is going to mean that we're not going to be getting many features or modes. With, like, we're not. Like, there were some people obviously expecting Edit Mode and Master League to drop with V2.3. And, like... That's never going to happen. Like they're they're going to wait to release that. I would say at the ideal time, um, I would say we'll know a lot of stuff at E three. That would just be my prediction. I think we'll know a lot of stuff at E three next year, yeah. but but who knows, man? I mean, who knows? who knows? Because yeah, but the gameplay at the moment is bad as well. But we'll see, man. We'll see what the crack is. But I think as long as people are buying coins and stuff, they'll look at the model as like a success. Do you know? Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is it, it is going to be it does it does depend on your metrics it does depend on what you're what you're judging it on really. yeah and, and, that, and that like say i think that's where the, the major disconnect is with the uh with the community yeah um speaking of the community if i can kind of steal uh, yeah man i let you I like to no i like to steal time from the podcast because i know you're good man from here just for news and and things um i had a a message this morning from uh one of my uh, long time moderators uh, on Twitch. Um, for those of you who are familiar or may not be familiar with him, uh, his name's Jeff. He also goes by the name of J Dubs. Yep. Um, and I'm, I don't want to go too much into to what's going on because obviously that's that's not for, for me to do. I, I just wanted to kind of have a bit of a tip the hat really to 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 just people within Twitch because I have met some fundamentally fantastic people within Twitch. Yes, you have your. <coughs> Your fair share of trolls on youtube <laughs> on twitch and, and everything else but you do un- uncover some incredibly good people um, yeah of course you know um and he's been a long time mod of mine um still is actually um uh, still is uh, a moderator of mine but we talk about kind of unsung heroes within the community yeah. uh, and we we, we yeah you know, we've seen a couple that you know already but i wanted to kind of just take a couple well maybe just like a minute out just to kind of yeah no man take your time just kind of mention um about people because you know i think 
my trip to Bali kind of brought it back home as to the, the kind of the human connection because it's the first time I'd seen people since COVID. Yeah. Like in terms of like from from where I knew people. And then to kind of come home, get a message, um, and to yeah, realistically, I just kind of want to just kind of say that, like, from everybody within you know Pez Universe, like our thoughts are, are with uh, Jeff, yeah, man, because you know it's he's had a very a very rough time of it, and you know I kind of not to put too much of a damper on it, but I just wanted to kind of just kind of tip our hat to him because again, I'm sure that you've got people within your 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 YouTube comments who you see every time, you see yeah. people within your Twitch chats every single time, and I just think you know there's countless hours that they do within your own community yeah, channels, unreal. within your channels yeah and sometimes we just never really get or they never really get a kind of a even just an acknowledgement so i just wanted to kind of just kind of put that out there for him because i know he's, he's going through a bit of a rough time at the moment and yeah, but yeah it's definitely it's, it's a it's a solid one that i just wanted to say that you know and, and of course you you know you can you know message him on on twitter i think it's at jeff links with a with a y and an, and an x yeah, Y yeah, L Y N X. So L Y N X shoot him a message. Um, I'm sure that he will more than appreciate any any kind of support you want to kind of throw his way. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, that's goes without saying, like, but we should probably say it. It's that it, that's the that's the type of comment to make, isn't it? Yeah. It does go without yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. but we probably should say it more than we do because like at the end of the day, like I've met I'll be forever grateful for wherever Pez or eFootball ends up, I'll be forever grateful for having met you, for met Cara, yeah. Ricky literally people who I've met in real life and have like practically felt like I've grown up with because we have so much in common. Um, you know, even when we disagree or we challenge yeah, each other, yeah, yeah. it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's nice to to have people from other parts of the world and kind of broaden your horizons. And yeah, yeah. like, I, I still maintain like, and I always maintain this with YouTube is that like the reason why I grind so much and the reason why I am the way I am is that like, I think time is the most valuable thing in the world. Like, forget about money and all that. Like, if we were yeah. in it for the money, like, we wouldn't be doing, we yeah, wouldn't be doing yeah, pez, absolutely. but uh, or e football. But like, I do think time is the most valuable commodity you can actually give somebody. If you give somebody your genuine time, yeah. Um, like, I don't think there's a price on that. And like, even anybody yeah. watching a video for like a minute or listening to ten minutes of this podcast when they have everything else going on coming up to Christmas, like you know you've you know you've a load of you've a load of stress and yeah. drama like even just like being part of somebody's kind of like 10 minutes like hobby like i do yeah. think and the guys that kind of keep it flowing and stuff you know it is it is definitely uh yeah, yeah it goes I, as i, I said think, it goes without saying yeah. but we should say it more like that's yeah, kind I think, of yeah i think yeah i think i think and uh, that's what i mean i think i think there are there are times where uh people are undervalued or underappreciated of course and i think that sometimes i think you, you never, as we've said before, when we've had chats about my my mental health issues and, and things like that, is that you never quite know what's going on with somebody until you take the time out to just maybe look behind the curtain. Sometimes yeah. what they're saying to your face isn't exactly what is going on. Sometimes no. you just need to kind of scratch below the surface a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, and um, yeah, I'm you know, I'm forever thankful for, for, for everyone that's that's put me in, in the positions that I'm in. Um, you know, I... You know, I mean, I'm forever indebted to Indominator. I'm forever Pedro Barbosa to Axel Casil. Like, indebted to you for giving me a doorway through here, like the Pez Universe. Like, uh, and then on top of that, you have all of my Twitch mods. You have all of my regulars within Twitch. I could name every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, point, but we we would not have enough time here to cover it. Yeah, but, uh, you know, as a kind of a message, just kind of as we are, what eleven days out from Christmas before before uh, when this is being recorded it's just as a little bit of a kind of a thank you because actually you know it does it does go it doesn't go unnoticed it doesn't you know i was reading through dms from jeff this morning which got me thinking because it was like every time villa would be playing it'd be like oh up the villa oh, i can't believe you guys are winning <laughs> like it, it messaged me about liverpool and like all kinds of stuff and um yeah so it was really nice to receive a message from him this morning yeah um, but obviously it's it's one to keep in your thoughts kind of closer to the list of countries that i mixed with over in bali was almost <laughs> i endless. told you man you're like james bond you're like the bourbon like, of james bond like like i had I, you know again and I'll, I'll close this as like a very pleasant experience i had over there which was um it was three well we were playing what it was the england france game and and the the guys from like the the middle east 
Um, and by the Middle East, I mean like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, yeah. Syria, Iran, Kuwait, Bahrain, uh, Lebanon. Like all these guys uh, were having like, uh, they basically were like, oh, where's we're, we're going back to our hotel rooms. We're going to have a, a, a co-op tournament. Do you want in? And I was like, hey, do you know what? Actually, I need something to keep me awake until 3 a.m. Bali time to go watch England. Like, sweet. <laughs> And then it turned into like, which you probably would have already saw on like Midnatters, like Instagram or Twitter or, or, you know, loads of different posts and, and videos that were there. And it was that magical kind of moment where you go, Jesus, this, this, this takes me back. Like it takes you back to a moment. And it's like, it's like there's 10 of us in a room that fits like three people. There's two, <laughs> there's two, there's two PS5s. There's, two, there's somebody who's brought a monitor with them specifically. Like there was all kinds of like crazy stuff. And it was yeah, just. But- that's what yeah, it's all about, man. Three, That's what it's all three, about. Three, three a.m. pizzas that were getting delivered in from Bali, like a pizza <laughs> that was open till like four in the morning. Like it was just, it's great. But yeah, yeah but. it's it's those experiences that bring you together. So I just kind of want to take a little bit of time out and just to be like, hey, actually, the human side of these things are appreciated. It's yeah. not just, it, you know, you're not just a number when you drop into a street. No, definitely not, man. Every every little helps, you know. Every even just interacting with someone and having a pleasant experience with them can like Absolutely. brighten our day as well. Like if I Absolutely. if I see a message from somebody and they're like, you know, like oh, what's the crack? And they're saying it to me, and like I'd be like, you know, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd be like, like, yeah, okay, that's a good day. You know, I'm like, yeah, well, what is the crack? You know, so. <laughs> Yeah, man. But look, yeah. I enjoyed the chat with you as usual. Um, it's obviously going to be a busy couple of days, so I'm not too sure when I'll get this out, but I'll probably try and get it out uh, probably soon enough, maybe tonight or tomorrow evening, uh, and it'll be on the YouTube, and then the audio version will be on all the regular podcast hosts. But yeah, I mean, that's it, man. We'll be back quite soon. I don't know when we get another episode before Christmas, but you never know. You never know. We'll see what the crack is. Um, we, we, and, might, we, yeah. might pop, we might we might pop something down your chimney on Christmas Day. You never yeah, know. you never know. Because I do want to do a live stream. That is that is yes. kind of... I want yes. to make it live and have people... We've been the, threatening this for months. Get yeah. it done. Get it sorted. Yeah, man. But the idea is I want it to be like kind of... Uh, what's that show on... The England is a talk no not talk sport oh no it? you don't want to be like talk no sport. not like that but I want the, I want it to be that like if somebody's in the in the in the, in the comms or in the chat and they yeah, want to yeah. pop in with a question instead of typing the question they can pop into the discord as a guest talk for 10 minutes and then we can discuss it and, and move on and stuff like that and then just have it more interactive because I think okay. we bounce off people a lot better so oh absolutely Absolutely. That is it, man. That is it for me. Um, it's good to have you back, Wes. And yep, absolutely. Good to be back. Happy holidays to everyone that is, is celebrating. If we don't get back and we don't get a live stream, we will try. Um, but obviously, I know it's a busy time of the year. So I do appreciate you even listening to, to 5, 10, 15, the whole lot of this <laughs> podcast. It doesn't matter how long you listen. You can listen absolutely. to Batch. But uh, yeah, that's it for me, Wes. I'll let you say your goodbyes as well. And uh, Yeah, so we are we are on everywhere that you can get a podcast. We're on SoundCloud. Uh, what is it? SoundCloud, iTunes. It's been a while since on this. Everything, SoundCloud. man. Spotify. Um, I think we're on Spotify SoundCloud. now. Yeah. yeah. iTunes, Spotify. Uh, of course, you've got the video version on YouTube, so you can come and follow us. Uh, he's been the Midnight Kid. I have been Wes FC, and we will see you guys soon. Peace.